Okay, awesome. Right, I think we will uh, we will start now. Um, so, Kieran, my my co-host, if you could reveal yourself. There we go. Awesome. So hi, everyone. Welcome. Um, it feels ages since I've done a webinar with Open Athens. So I'm very excited to be back after our about six week break from um, any of our live webinars. So welcome. It's great to have have um, have you all back, whether this is your first webinar with us or you've been here before. Um, it's great to have you guys along with us today. Um, so my name is Sophie. Uh, I'm one of the marketing officers for Open Athens and I'm joined by Kieran, who's one of our international sales managers. I don't think Kieran needs much introduction because I'm sure all of you here will know who he is or have spoken to him at least once. So cool, Kieran, if you could go to the next slide, please. Fab. So before uh, Kieran starts, just a quick bit of housekeeping for everyone. So we are recording. Um, so if you miss anything, or um, you'd like to share this presentation with any colleagues, um, please be aware that we will send the recording to you afterwards. Um, it's also great in case you miss anything. Um, but yeah, just bear that in mind. Uh, we are recording and we cannot hear or see you. I know you guys um, you know, used to webinars by now because I'm sure we've all been to many, 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 many webinars this year, especially. Uh, we can't see or hear you, so don't worry about anything in the background. If you have kids or animals running around, it's absolutely fine. It will not disturb us. If you do have any questions, and I really ask, please, you know, please ask us any questions that you may have um, throughout the presentation. Uh, you don't have to wait until the end. If you have something to say, we'd love to hear from you. Please use the Q&A box, which you'll find in the bottom tab um, of the Zoom interface. Um, alternatively, if you're feeling brave, um, you can just let me know in the chat that you'd like to come off mute and you can ask a question in person. We haven't had anyone do that yet, but I still like to offer it because um, it is nice to hear from you. Um, hear from you guys um, as well that way. Awesome. So a bit of context to what this new webinar series is before we kick off. So why are we doing this webinar series? Um, series is a really important word here. This is not a one-off. Um, this is a new uh, webinar series just for our publisher customers, our publisher slash service provider customers. So this was um, conceptualized originally from a successful library customer webinar series that we launched earlier this year. And we basically, due to the success of that and the feedback that we had from our customers, we wanted to produce exactly the same thing um, for the other side of the product, which is for you guys, our um, publisher and service provider customers. So what is this series and what, what do we want to achieve um, from doing this? So firstly, we want to ensure that all of our, um, all of our um, customers are confident with how the product works. And we all want to make sure you share the same standard of product knowledge and confidence using the product. Um, we want to have some dedicated time with you. you know, we want to make sure that um, we're listening to your questions um, and we have a, we have a good monthly, uh, monthly platform to hear from you if you have any specific feedback. Um, I know that you guys will have a relationship with your account manager. However, we wanted to offer another platform for you guys to, to get in contact with us. Um, so this is, this is going to be it. Um, we also want to um, have a regular way of keeping you up to date with plan changes and also any product updates that we think will be really useful for you. And it's a bit cheesy, but I really liked the phrase discuss, inspire, inspire, support. I know that sounds really corporate, but I just thought it was a nice way of summarizing um, what this is. Um, and yeah, uh, that's kind of in summary. So um, I think there's a couple of important things to point out. It, we're, we're going quite simple today. I say simple, it's not, it's, you know, it's a, it's a complex topic, but we're starting at quite a high level, um, high level uh, topic here. And as we go on, as the kind of months progress, the complexity will be increasing. So some of you, all of this might be new information for you, which is amazing. You know, we want everyone to, to, to learn something today. But as some of you might think, actually, I know this already, um, fine. Hopefully that means the next one you'll learn something. So I just want to make that, like, make that clear um, that hopefully, um, you know, even if you know what we're talking about, you might learn one new thing today. Um, but please, please hang on for the next one and the ones after that, because um, yeah, we'll be, we'll be getting into the more nitty gritty of the product um, as we go along. So I'm just about to hang over to Kieran, um, but after I want to put this in, because I know we're all a bit webinar fatigued. I know we've been to a lot of them recently. Um, hopefully this one will be enjoyable for you. We don't want to keep you too long, um, but we also want to make this interactive. So um, if you do have any questions or anything you'd like to say, to make this more interesting, please just let us know. Um, but yeah, that's me done now. And I'm gonna hand over to Kieran. 
So yeah. Thanks thank a lot, you. Sophie. So yeah, hopefully you can all hear me loud and clear. Um, yeah, firstly, credit to Sophie for coming up with the title. Uh, it took us ages to come up with that, and, and she came out with that corker. So thank yeah, you. Yeah, I, uh, I forgot uh, to take credit for that. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm taking no credit for that. Um, but yeah, thanks again, everybody, for taking the time to be with us today. Um, but just before I get started, I put together a few things that all customers should know about Open Athens. So it's our 25th year. 25 years ago, in a tiny little back office at the University of Bath, Athens, as we were known back then, was created. This was a community funded approach to create a universal single sign on service for the academic market in the UK. It was successfully rolled out and following adoption by universities, we saw the first publishers integrate Open Athens with their platforms. And we're also growing quite a bit since then from three to 54 people and counting, around half of which are dedicated developers creating new products and services for uh, our publisher customers, as well as product upgrades and enhancements. Now, some of you might not know, we have three distinct offerings for publishers and content providers, the Open Athens Federation, which underpins everything we do. We have software like the Wayfinder service, and we also provide professional services, including user experience, consultancy, and SAML expertise. We are not only the world's first, as far as we know, but also the largest federation in the world in terms of members. So over 1,200 libraries around the world use Open Athens to provide access to digital content for their users, of which there are over 4 million every month. So our customers come from a range of markets, but we do have particular strength in the education and health markets. And finally, most of our new customers move to Open Athens from using a proxy service and the most notable being Easy Proxy. Now, of course, uh, user behavior has changed a lot through the decades and remote working is now the norm, uh, as well as the increased need for security. Uh, and, and Open Athens certainly helps uh, meet those demands. So here are our topics for discussion in today's webinar. We'll have a high level look at SAML and why we use it and why it's one of the best solutions for single sign-on. What does it mean to be a member of the Open Athens Federation and some of the benefits that come with membership? What is the Federation and how it works? And finally, uh, a very common question we get is uh, what the difference between Shibboleth and Open Athens is. So what is SAML? Uh, so we stole this or borrowed it from another website because it's a pretty good analogy for how SAML works. So one important point to take away from this analogy is that Authentication is done at the wristband tent or the identity provider or library. So students at our university are authenticated when they are provided with their student email and credentials. So this means that the beer tent or the service provider or publisher does the authorization. So this means that service providers and publishers don't have to be involved with handing out thousands of wristbands. They can just concentrate on delivering their service. Uh, this is a really valuable function of SAML. So as a publisher, you know that only legitimate users can access the sites, but you also know where they come from and how often they're visiting. SAML is essentially just a very secure way to pass information between users, libraries, and publishers. So if it isn't already obvious, uh, there are some key reasons why we use the SAML standard. So SAML is the international standard for authentication. Microsoft, Google, social media platforms, and internet banking all use SAML for single sign-on. And unlike IP-based authentication services, it was specifically designed for authentication. So again, it's independent of IP addresses. So access is anytime, anywhere. Uh, and Open Athens is often referred to as a remote access solution. And for many, its primary use is for when users are off campus. So whether a user is at home on their laptop, uh, laptop or on a train, on their mobile, they have the same credentials and a consistent user journey. Information or attributes is passed to your site every time a user logs in. So things like name, email address, job role, or even eye color. Attributes are flexible and can be passed to your site whenever a user logs in. So this gives you obviously much greater granular control over who accesses the, con the content you provide. Uh, it's incredibly secure. So who is accessing the platform and how often? So the who being those authenticated users. 
and there how often being a much more granular insight into user behavior and how they're interacting with your platform. A single username and password creates a much better user experience. So users will not only access journals, but all of their apps, databases, and other research content with that single credential when they use Open Athens. This means that publishers and librarians are getting greater engagement with the content they're either selling or buying. And the really key takeaway is it's widely adopted. It's not just us. SAML, as mentioned, is widely adopted. It's also incredibly interoperable, meaning lots of different SAML solutions can be integrated with each other, and this provides a much more scalable solution for publishers like yourselves. So to that age-old question, what is the difference between Open Athens and Shibboleth? So when it comes to single sign-on services, particularly in the academic space, there are two major players in town. Now there are others, obviously, but uh, when, it, uh, when it comes to the academic space, especially these are by far the most common. And of course, you know, we benefit from that. Uh, but with that in mind, it's important to know that there are actually, uh, the two are actually much more, much more similar than, than most people think. So really the only key difference uh, you need to be aware of is, uh, is Shibboleth is open source code. And by that we mean anybody can go online uh, and download open source code, implement their own Shibboleth uh, implementation. Whereas Open Athens is a, a managed service um, and I don't think I need to go into too much detail about the key benefits of using a managed service over an open source service or vice versa. Essentially it's the difference between uh, you know, fixing your car yourself or, or paying a mechanic to do so. So other than that, the two are very similar. Both use the SAML standards. So as mentioned, they can be integrated with each other quite happily. And in fact, around 50% of our publisher customers will be using Shibboleth software to integrate with Open Athens. So ultimately the key takeaway is whether you use our software or Shibboleth or another service, as long as it's SAML, you can pretty much treat them as a single service. So apologies for uh, another analogy. Um, but this is quite a useful one to, to think about how a federation fits together. So the Visa network in this case is the federation. The bank is the library. The card owner is the end user and your card is your credentials or username and password. And in this case, the vendor or the shop or the service you're using uh, is the publisher or service provider. So with both federations and the Visa network, service providers don't need to be concerned with managing every single one of those transactions between them and the user. That is all handled through the network. So the network, the Visa network is, is very much like an access management federation. It underpins the financial services industry and facilitates those transactions between banks, the customers and the services they use. And federations operate in a very similar fashion. So when service providers and libraries join their federation, they are connected via a network and secure transactions are handled through the federation. And centralized management of these relationships uh, is not only scalable, it's also much more secure, much fewer opportunities for error, as there might be if you were doing, uh, managing those individual connections yourselves. So this is a very, very high level look at how the federation fits together. So the Federation sits in between your application, your service or your website and the institutions um, so that you never have to interact with those individual institutions on a technical basis individually. The Federation takes care, takes care of those connections. And Federations is a very technical term, but when we talk about Federations, we're really talking about that scalable, seamless, single sign-on. So some key benefits. So why is it important to be part of a federation? And what does it mean to be part of a federation? So put simply, any service provider or library that uses Open Athens will be part of our federation. We connect users to the content they need. Uh, and these are just, again, some benefits of, of joining a federation or being part of any other federation. So first and foremost, they're incredibly stable. So federations are robust services that are centrally managed and they maintain connections between you and your customers. So you don't have to. Again, they're scalable, they're incredibly scalable services. So federations use SAML, so you can implement a SAML service, whether it's Shibboleth or Open Athens, and it won't require individual, individual integrations with your customers. 
SAML is the global standard. So whether you're using, again, Shibboleth or our software, you can enable access to our federation and its members and any other federation. Uh, increasing uh, the, the availability of your content through single sign-on. Another key benefit is, is that user experience. So we're not based on IP addresses. Uh, it's a much more standardized way of accessing content, uh, a much more universal way of accessing content. And it's become, uh, whether it's organizational login or Open Athens login or Shibboleth login, uh, they've become synonymous with accessing digital content online. And finally, security. So federations are built on trust. So the federation will validate um, and, and maintain those connections between uh, publishers and their customers and the users. I can just hear somebody in the back. Sorry, that that's, you, yeah, so that was me. That was me coming off me. Um, just to say, <laughs> <laughs> um, just say I have, uh, have a question here um, yeah, from Kelly, who's um, said, well, but well, it's, it's a, a point to reiterate that um, the recording and the presentation will be available after this. Mm -hmm. Kelly said, I find the analogy super helpful and want to be able to easily refer back to them. So yes, the recording will be sent out to all of you um, in a follow-up email. Um, and also the slides will be made available as well. So yeah, you will get all the information that you are currently seeing. Um, I have a question, um, Kieran, as well, yeah, um, from Anne. And said, as a service provider, can I provide SAML authentication to a customer, e.g. library, that is not part of Open Athens or Shibboleth Federation? Uh, yes, is the answer to that. So, yeah, I've, I've kind of concentrated on Shibboleth and Open Athens uh, because, you know, that's kind of the space we operate in. Uh, but we do have examples of publishers connecting directly to ADFS, for example. Um, again, it's, it's a one-to-one -one connection, so you don't get that scalability. But if you do have perhaps, you know, some corporate customers who use is your AD or, or ADFS, then you can, yeah, you can sure you can connect to those, um, those individually. Uh, it just might require a little bit more configuring. Cool, thank you very much. Um, and if you would like any other further clarification or have any other questions, I just said, great, awesome. Well, even if you do, um, please get in contact nonetheless. But yeah, great. Thank you, Kieran. Thanks. Yeah, in terms of the analogies, I still the visa one off David Oral, our architect. So yes, I can't yeah. take credit. So, I can't take well, credit we, we can't take credit personally, but we can take credit <laughs> internally. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, I find um, them really helpful as well. They're, it's a good, they're cool. a great way to take something that can be spoken about in a very technical way and make it much easier to yeah. digest. Yeah, and, and that is the biggest challenge of what we do, really. Um, you know, we only exist because this stuff is complicated. But again, yeah. communicating it in a simple way uh, has its challenges. For sure. Cool. Yeah. So, uh, so moving kind of into the broader spectrum of federations. So Open Athens, again, is a federation and we have library and service provider customers all over the world, but we aren't the only federation. So countries around the world have adopted the federation model to provide a much more standard method for accessing digital content. Uh, and the good news is these federations all use SAML. So the, the federations operate in the same way that Open Athens does. And I've mentioned here Edugain. So Edugain is the body that manages these federations to ensure they abide by recommendations and best practices. Uh, but Edugain also connects these federations in, in a technical sense. So you don't have to connect each federation individually. You can join one of the participating federations and get access to the wider Edugain. There is a caveat to that. I don't know if you've, you've read my blog, but uh, you still have to register with those federations individually because they will have their own legal terms. But on a technical sense, uh, that the integration is taken care of through Edugain. So again, it increases that scalability you really got through joining a single federation. And, and it really is a, um, there is a global market for, for federated access. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about um, some of the initiatives in, in Southeast Asia in a, in, a minute, in a minute. So yeah, here's a snapshot of uh, some of the federations that are out there. There are actually uh, over 60 now. So this is just a snapshot of some of the some of the larger ones. So some of them have been around for a number of years, uh, while others are newer and as a result, much smaller. And what you'll notice perhaps with some of these federations or uh, in fact, all of these federations is that they are country specific. And that is generally because they are publicly funded uh, and built to serve the academic institutions in their respective countries. But the federation model is also a growing concept. So it's been chosen as the future of authentication, in, especially in the research and academic space. Uh, and there's an initiative in Southeast Asia called Asia Connects. It's an EU funded program to build federations in developing countries in Southeast Asia. 
uh, universities in the region uh, have been contributing much more research than ever before. So adopting the Fluoration model is seen as a massive priority for those students and researchers. So you'll see here that, again, these federations are built using Shibboleth. Well, we, of course, build ours using Open Athens, but ultimately they both use SAML. So you can take part in these federations with either solution, uh, again, increasing the footprint of your, of your services. So as some of you are aware, in many parts of the world, easy proxy is king. Uh, that's still very much the case in the US. Uh, and it's still the biggest provider of authentication services available. And even Open Athens, uh, we, we build our own proxy service. Um, it's still an important part uh, of, uh, of accessing digital content because not every publisher provides SAML authentication. Uh, but it's also you know, a relatively suboptimal solution for the industry. Although you know, it's cheap and relatively widely adopted. Uh, and for many years, it was seen as the, the most accessible route into some form of standardized login. However, as mentioned previously, uh, most of our new library customers moved to Open Athens from Easy Proxy, and this is for uh, many reasons, but the main ones are reduced admin. So managing proxy configs can be a full time uh, job for librarians. And as much as some of them absolutely love doing that, uh, it is uh, time spent where they could be spending it on doing more important things. Uh, and if anything breaks, there can be a, a long drawn out process, process of trying to fix, uh, fix, fix proxy access to, to a particular resource. Uh, and it's also you know, a relatively technical and highly skilled role as well. Um, so user experience is another big key driver behind the uh, decision to move to Open Athens. So on-site and off-site access is consistent and users can access content in a number of ways. So whether that's through you know, an authenticated link or logging in directly through a publisher website. And finally, analytics. So as each user is given their own credentials, librarians know which content is used and how often, and that gives them greater insight going into those license negotiations, which um, some of you might not like to hear, but it gives them a bit, a bit more control over over those negotiations, but also, you know, it gives the publishers much greater insight into usage as well. You're not just getting a blanket number against an IP address. So the report in the link here is generally aimed at our library customers, but it's still an insightful read. So even when publishers uh, provide a SAML single sign-on, um, it's important to, to realise that, you know, many will still revert to, to setting up access through a, through a proxy. Uh, I think generally there's a, a perception that this is uh, an easier onboarding, uh, but that shouldn't be the case and uh, in our opinion and uh, in many opinion federated authentication should always be the primary method if it's available uh, and just to carry on from that so the university of melbourne are quite a new customer of ours and they moved from us moved to us from from easy proxy uh, i think either earlier this year or late last year uh, and it's a very successful demonstration of a, of a, of a move from easy proxy to open Athens. Uh, they're now the, the biggest global user within Open Athens. Uh, they're routinely at the top of the usage stats uh, on a monthly basis. Uh, and it's really transformed not only the librarians' lives, but users and researchers. Uh, and it came at a time when, of course, people started to work remotely and enforced remote working. Um, and you know, the, the transition was, was seamless for them. Uh, and having something that is a remote access solution in place for the, for the the thing that we won't name at the start of this year was a, was a really powerful thing. I have a couple of questions, Kieran, sorry, before we go on to the slide. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, the first question is um, from Anne, would you say federations are more widely used in Europe than in North America? Uh, that is a good, that is a really good question. So not often is the case, but the UK really led the way with federation, federated access, um, you know, Open Athens is 20, 25 years old, um, but also the UK federation. Um, so our parent company, JISC, also uh, manages the UK federation and they, um, they are on the Shibboleth Consortium, uh, for example, they're one of the big funders there. Uh, they're one of the technical partners there as well. So we, we definitely lead the way on this sort of thing. Um, DFN in Germany is another one that's heavily used, but there is a, you know, in common is a huge federation based in the US. But what we found and why our growth in the US has been so strong is that um, people just don't have the appetite to learn Shibboleth, understand SAML and implement their own service. So they were really looking for a managed, a managed solution. So although you know, a federation is in place in the US, we found that it's not generally used as much and easy proxy is, is still king. 
Great. Um, I've got another question here um, from Jane that says, if you work in healthcare, pharma or a corporate organisation, um, so, you know, not, not traditional academic, can you join a federation through Edugain? Uh, that's another good question. So um, there was an appetite for the pharmaceutical industry to build their own federation a few years ago. Um, we have quite a few large pharma on our books. Um, so because most of the national federations are publicly funded, uh, you know, a big chemical company can't be seen to make use of that service. So which is why, you know, lots of them will choose Open Athens. Um, but Open Athens is not part of Edugain uh, for a few reasons. Again, we're not publicly funded. We know we're, we have customers like Shell and BP who, you know, it might not be looked on favorably if they start to make use of public money. Um, so lots of those corporates will choose Open Athens over, over their national federation. Fab, thank you so much. So that's all the questions from now, but there are obviously, please, plenty of other opportunities for you guys to, to ask any other questions mm. before the end. Um, but yeah, thank you. So yeah, apologies. I mean, like, like Sophie said, it's, it's very high level stuff, but I think, you know, like with your first year of university, I think it's good to get everybody onto a, a level playing field. And um, yeah, hopefully as we go through the series um, and we get into the technical details, we'll hopefully invite some of our technical colleagues along um, and, and they can kind of take over from me because uh, there's a lots of expertise across the team um, far beyond my own knowledge so um yeah hopefully as we go through this you'll all learn something yeah fab so um i'm going to quickly jump in here um before um kieran finishes off so um we do um have a well it's not it's not launched yet but we will be launching a vendor promotion list um so this is an opt-in list for our library customers to receive um, any sort of promotional copy or um, comms specific about, you know, comms specifically focusing on the services that you guys offer. Um, and we're going to be launching it um, this year, hopefully towards the end of this year. Um, I don't have kind of specifics on what, you know, what the comms will particularly entail. Um, however, you know, it won't, it's not going to be a particularly complicated uh, process. So I'll make sure that you guys are all up to date when we have, um, you know, our, our opt-in list starts to, starts to grow. Um, but as we said, the opt-in list will include anyone from that, you know, the how many library customers was it that you said at the beginning? I really should know. 1,200 uh, around that over mark. Yeah, over 1,200. Yeah. Um, so it will be any of the, yeah, any of our um, library contacts within our customer field um, who uh, will opt in to receive these comms from you. Because um, at the moment we don't offer a platform like this. Um, so this will be, this is quite new. Um, but we thought this might be quite an exciting, um, exciting way for, for you guys to, yeah, to uh, broadcast who you are and what you do. So yeah. Um, sorry, just a uh, will the opt-in email list be available for free or a paid service? Yes, yeah, so this is this is for free. Um, we, you know, yeah, you won't have to won't have to pay for this at all. Um, this is something that we'd like to offer you as our customer. So there's no kind of added, yeah, no, no, nothing that we need in return. Um, yeah, we wanted this to be to be for you guys to utilize. So good question, but yeah, it's completely free. If it becomes really, really successful, obviously we'll have to come up with a way of triaging if the demand is really large. Um, but we will, yeah, we will, uh, we will get there when it, when that, yeah, cross that bridge when we get there. That's the time I was looking for. But yeah. So sure, yeah, and I think you know, lots of librarians will favour content that is available through Open Athens, and you know, we've always been keen to to provide marketing support. Um, so I think that is, yeah, moving us in that direction. I think. Uh, so yeah, account managers. So um, we've got some um, new resource in the team. So now we have three dedicated account managers, Blake, Lionel and Phil. Um, so the hope is that you will hear from us much more regularly uh, than you would have before. Uh, you know, we've always been a very small team. In fact, Phil managed uh, the publisher side of the business for <laughs> well over a decade on his own. So, um, you know, we've got to the point now where, you know, we're, we're a global organization and, and we've committed more resource into uh, into helping our customers. And, you know, that has come in the form of uh, a new account management team. Uh, so Blake Lyon and Phil, Phil has been around for, I think he's 20th year this year. 20 years, yeah. 20 years. 20 so years. Um, he was a young uh, <laughs> whippersnapper when he started. Um, <laughs> Uh, so yeah, he, you know, he is he's obviously going to be the, the more senior of the three, but um, yeah, so we're, we're just keen to, to engage with our publisher customers much more often these days um, to kind of, yeah, demystify some of the complexity around what we do, because yeah, we've acknowledged that what we do is complex, um, but yeah, you know, so we're going to try and be better at uh, 
working with our customers more closely essentially. Yeah, and I, Phil is away at the moment, so he can't join us today, but I'm sure he won't mind me saying that he will be uh, drafted in to uh, present with me um, in the future on this series. So you'll definitely be seeing more of Phil. Um, yeah. yeah. In fact, he might be on the next one. So he yeah, just be, a quick, yes. <laughs> quick insight into, into the next webinar. I'm sure you've all seen at least one web webinar talking about seamless access. Um, so we'll be talking about seamless access, uh, what the implications are for you as a publisher, uh, what the implications are for the wider industry. Um, we'll, talk, we'll look at a couple of the people that actually adopted it. So American Chemical Society, for example, if you haven't read this article, it's quite interesting. They were one of the early adopters for seamless access. Uh, Ralph Youngen has been heavily involved with seamless access. Uh, he works for American, American Chemical Society. So we'll be looking at this again, you know, trying to dispel it into a much more uh, accessible way, because I think some of the language around seamless access has been very technical. Uh, I think we get the feeling that some of the non, some of the smaller non-research publishers may be may feel omitted from from the initiative. So you know we're just trying to communicate it to our customers and make sure you you have everything you need to be able to make that decision about whether you adopt it. But ultimately, I think for us, it will only be a success if as many people as possible uh, adopt seamless access, and, and we can certainly help you do that. So yeah, if it's you. Yeah, so I want to um, give this give this opportunity um, before we finish for any other questions um, that anyone might have. Um, the next slide also asks for uh, topic suggestions. So obviously, we think we know what you might like to hear, um, but you might have some really good suggestions. Um, our, as a bit of context, the library alternative to this webinar was really driven by um, customers requesting webinars on certain topics um, and we'd really like to you know to give you the same opportunity so if you do have anything that you think I still would really like some support on that or if there's anything product specific now is your chance please use the Q&A box or the chat box um, but yeah give you a couple of minutes um, I've just had a suggestion to post the link into the chat and I think that's in referring for referral to the um, the scholarly kitchen article, yeah, I'll get that. Yeah. Thank you. So, to all attendees, there it is. Okay, great. So, we've had some stuff. Um, how to help our host vendor fully implement the redirector? Fully implement redirector. I think that's in reference to links. Catch that, Kieran. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. So, are they talking about a platform provider in this case? It'd be good to get some clarification on that. Yes, Linda is. Uh, yeah, I mean, the best thing you can do is put us in touch with them. Uh, so, we've recently helped, uh, I won't name them just in case I'm not allowed to, uh, but we recently helped a, a platform provider implement Waveless. Um, so, yeah, anything that is uh, seen as a, a SAML service or a SAML enhancement. Uh, we have, you know, we have the technical expertise to, to help them through that process. So, yeah, all, all I say, all I would say is to, is to introduce us to your contact there, and then we can try and get through to their technical team, and, and we can help them uh, with that process. Yeah. Um, falling on from that, someone else has said deep linking and waveless URLs, please. So that is obviously a good follow on. Uh, that I think that was one of our in in the pipeline. So yeah, that's certainly something that we know. Deep linking is hugely popular and it's definitely a ma massive uh, improvement on UX, but it's also pretty technical um, and it's not something that we out of the box support. But again, it's something that you know we have expertise to, to help you uh, get over the line with. Um, and that, I think that will go a long way to encouraging uh, non-usage of, of proxy resources because that you know that is definitely a driver behind people defaulting to, to using a proxy resource because if it's not deep linkable then they generally wouldn't want to go down the federation route mm -hmm. um, yeah good suggestion yeah so these, we're gonna all of these are being saved um so yes yeah, this is the kind of thing that will really help us kind of sculpt out the future topics um so linda who originally asked the question about um helping um host vendors implement redirector links linda says you've been very generous with your time with them and they're still confused um <laughs> so <laughs> i don't know <laughs> I'd, love um, to, yeah, I'd love to unpick that i mean that yeah Unfortunately, that is too uncommon. But um, yeah, especially when it comes, especially when it comes to the redirector, because it is 
is quite unique to open Athens. Um, yeah, I, I'd, I'd be interested to, to understand uh, what's going on there. Well, so I'd, yeah, well, more than yeah. Happy to. We, we have Linda's email address, sorry to interrupt, we have Linda's <clears throat> um, email address, obviously, when, when Linda registered. So um, if you're okay, Linda, I can send you over, I can get your email address and you can um, sh share what's happened with Kieran a bit more and, and then we can we can go from there. Yeah, unfortunately, we can't go around knocking on people's doors these days, so um, we'll, we'll do our best. Yeah, awesome. Um, so another question from Anne who says, um, when you mentioned SAML, is this SAML 2.0? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I should have clarified. Yes, yeah, so the, the most up-to-date SAML, SAML 2.0, um, is what we're referring to when we talk about SAML. I'm just writing down Linda's name there. Fab. So we haven't had any other questions. That's all that has come in. Um, but we do definitely have some direction in the future. Um, that should hopefully be helpful. <clears throat> um, but great. Unless anyone has anything else. I speak now or hold your peace until the next one, I think. It's <laughs> but okay, cool. Well, we'll uh, we're we will uh, we're a bit early um to finish. We have about eight minutes. Um but I think we'll kind of we'll cut it there. Um Yeah, that's that's not a bad thing. Yeah, no, that's true. <laughs> um and Anne says thank you, that was great. You're very welcome, Anne. I'm glad that you found it useful. Um like I said, this is a new initiative for our publisher and service provider customers. So if you do have any feedback um or you know any other ideas on how we can support you and how we can help you, um please please let us know. Um yeah. As a, just a bit of a context, my role is specifically to to work with our customers. So, any feedback I can get from you guys on on how to improve our improve our service um, in terms of the communications and the support would be really useful to know. Yeah. And guest speakers, you know, any uh, any guest speakers yes. are always welcome. If you have unique yeah. experiences or can pass on uh, pass on wisdom. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, um, yeah, feel free to. Fab. So yeah, I think we go to the last slide, and that is done. So um, I want to say thank you to Kira and myself for speaking um, and thank you guys to you know for watching. Um, we will be uploading this to the Open Athens YouTube um, but as always you can email me directly um, and I can kind of point you in the right direction. If not you can email the contact at um, openathens.net as well if you have any questions. And yeah uh, that is everything. Thank you so much guys um, and hopefully see you next time. Like I said, all information will be emailed to you, slides, recordings, and uh, yeah, there'll be plenty of opportunities for you guys to get um, get in touch. So Thanks, thank everybody. You, thank you. Yeah, thank you for the nice comments that are coming in. It means a lot to us. Um, so yeah, I know. Thank you so much. Okay, bye bye. <laughs>